वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर रुखसाना रहमान आई विल बी स्पीकिंग ऑन इकोनॉमिक इफेक्ट्स ऑफ डिसप्लेसमेंट दिस लेक्चर बेसिकली डील्स विथ द इकोनॉमिक इफेक्ट्स ऑन द डिसप्लेस्ड वीमेन इट ऑल्सो डिस्कसिस अबाउट द डिसरापन ऑफ द सेक्शुअल डिविजन ऑफ लेबर बिटवीन मेल एंड फीमेल इट स्पीक्स about the feminization of poverty feminization of agriculture and also feminization of labor the lecture also discusses about the positive and the negative effects of conflict on the displaced women conflict is one of the most important challenges facing the world today conflicts have multiple devastating effects and displacement is one of the most obvious and immediate effect of violence displacement influences the lives livelihood and health of almost 1.5 billion people the lives of women in context of violent conflict adjust dramatically in response to changes in their households and their communities as well as a direct response to fighting and violence such situations leave women almost entirely alone to care for their families under very difficult circumstances during the post conflict situation women suffer humiliation and brutalities and also lose their means of livelihood however at the same time the end of conflict can open opportunities to challenge traditional socio cultural institutions and norms that act against gender equality in situations of armed conflict or displacement women in developing countries tend to maintain their livelihood and that of their families by working in the informal sector thus their labor is not recognized and socially protected and they are completely dislocated from the traditional community in the holding of land and resources resettlement is conducted under patriarchal processes and gives control of rehabilitation packages to men even if the situation eventually permits return to their original habitat women lives have been drastically affected by the conflict while discussing about the disruption of sexual division of labor between male and female the massive human losses from violent conflict can exacerbate women's responsibility with the disruption of traditional sexual division of labor During conflict and post-conflict period, women often assume the primary responsibility of ensuring the survival of families. Women take over this pivotal economic role, especially when working males have died or have joined fighting units, and when families are forced to move internally or to another country. One of the most significant economic effects of conflict is that it leads to important changes in the sexual division of labor as well as the economic activities of women. In some countries before the outbreak of a conflict there was a clearly defined sexual division of labor which confined the economic activities of women to the narrow framework of domestic economy. 
The devastation of conflict and violence caused by many years of war changed this traditional pattern of gendered economy as well as social fabric. During post-conflict situation, as a result of insecurity, a large portion of the rural population is forced to abandon their agricultural activities. They have had to take shelter in the camps as displaced people. Thus, the conflict and long years of living in camps introduce significant changes to the sexual division of labor and gender roles. In general, conflict exacerbate gender disparities, both in society at large and in families in particular. As the military operation to liberate the Daesh held city of Mosul is underway, many Iraqis in and around the city have been displaced and are fleeing the conflict. Hundreds of families are arriving on a daily basis to various camps, such as the one in the Khazar district east of Mosul. Many are relieved to have escaped from Daesh. Khazar camp is one of the largest sites set up by the Iraqi government to provide shelter to those displaced by the conflict. Water and food can be found in abundance. Organizers say they can accommodate more internally displaced people. So far, new refugees from the Mosul conflict have found comfort in this camp. However, nearly a million people are likely to flee the fighting in the coming months, which is expected to strain resources in all camps. Sometimes, conflict situations have a positive effects on women. Women's social and economic responsibilities may increase with conflict situation. Women are obliged to take over the responsibility of supporting their households, require learning new skill perform jobs previously held by men or prepare them for entrepreneurial income generating activities. These positions assist women to achieve greater financial independence and lead to long term changes in the gender division of labor. In conflict situations, women and girls may become responsible for tasks previously undertaken by male relatives which take them beyond the confines of their traditional environment. Such tasks may include farming, trading or grazing animals. Women may have no choice other than to perform these activities or may undertake them because they are perceived as less threatening and therefore have greater freedom to pursue such economic activities than their male counterparts. Number two, loss of formal sector jobs or feminization of labor. It has been found that during the post-conflict period, women are generally the first to lose their jobs especially in the organized formal sector. High unemployment of men after the conflict often forces women out of the formal sector. This has been observed in Angola, Mozambique, former Yugoslavia and Zimbabwe and Nicaragua. Similarly, in the year 1940, the United States had only 27% of female labor. But in 1944, the female labor force had grown to 20 million as the men engaged in defense establishments were recruited in the armies. With the end of war and the return of the men, the female labor force decreased to a size similar to that of 1940. The loss of men in conflict and decline in household income triggered changes in the household allocation of labor. These changes include women's increased participation in the labor market. In Colombia, Calderon et al. in 2011 report that displaced married women work 8 hours more per week than their rural, not displaced counterparts and that their contribution to household earnings increased by 14% after displacement. 
But despite the overall reported rise in female employment across conflict affected contexts, women are particularly active in low skilled jobs and informal sector. As a result of the absence of male labor, women frequently have to take over tasks which were formerly considered for male. This means that women's labor load, which is frequently heavier than men's in times of normality, will be further increased, particularly in the context of food, water or fi firewood storages, which mean that women's usual tasks take longer and involve more work. Number three, single heads of households. In some countries, conflict displaced whole communities, leaving women as single heads of households who returned to devastated homes and villages. Women headed households faced many economic and social constraints during the post conflict period. Changes to women's economic roles and changes in the sexual division of labor are some of the possible consequences of conflict. Women, particularly those who have borne the brunt of their respective households, suffer especially in such situations. These households, which were headed and maintained by women, generally became poorer due to less access to adult labor and earning power and restricted access to community structures. Women may have to adopt survival mechanisms for which they are ill-equipped, untrained or which are socially unacceptable. In increased insecurity and fear of attack often causes women and children to flee, so they form the majority of the world's refugees and displaced. Women are heads of households and breadwinners, taking over responsibility for earning a livelihood, caring for farms and animals, trading and being active outside the home activities often traditionally carried out by men. This necessitates the development of new coping skills and confidence requiring courage and resilience to help sustain and rebuild families and communities torn apart by war. I don't know if you can hear me or if you're even there. I don't know if you would listen to a gypsy's prayer. Yes, I know I'm just an outcast. I shouldn't speak to you Still I see your face and wonder Were you once an outcast too? God help the outcasts Hungry from birth Show them they don't find on earth God help my people We look to you still God help the outcasts Where nobody will I ask for wealth I ask for fame I ask for glory Love. I can possess. I ask for God and His angels to bless me. I ask for nothing. I can get by. But I know so many less lucky than I. God help the outcast children of God. 
Now, we will discuss the major constraint which was the lack for property rights. A major constraint was the lack of property rights. Generally, women were denied ownership of the land owned by dead husbands or parents. Conflict often coincides with or is the indirect cause of concurrent crisis such as famine, epidemics and economic upheaval which stretch the coping mechanisms of the community to the limit. Furthermore, armed conflict alters the composition of the family and of society, often leaving widows and wives of missing persons alone to support themselves and their dependents. In rural areas, women headed farm household often lacked the resources to purchase agricultural inputs and faced difficulty in obtaining labor for heavy agricultural operations. Those who did not own land or other assets worked as landless laborers or sharecroppers. They received minimal compensation for their hard work and barely managed to feed their families. In urban areas, most women worked in the informal sector, car carving out a living mostly by selling cooked foods, vegetables, fruits, clothes or other household items. This kind of situation also leads to the problems like feminization of poverty and feminization of agriculture. Now we will discuss about feminization of poverty. By the late 1980s, international institutions such as the World Bank began to argue that women are more vulnerable than men to extreme of poverty and its consequences. Today the concept of feminization of poverty has become an important issue. Many factors are responsible for the feminization of poverty. Number one, it has been linked with gender disparities in rights, entitlements and capabilities. Number two, women became heads of households either legally due to the debt, desertion or divorce of their spouse or the acting heads of a result of the migration of man. Number three, these households were found to be among the poorest and their severe poverty was seen as the result primarily of the lack of access to resources including skills and technological use. Number four, conflicts contributed a lot towards marked increase in poverty. As men would move to towns in search of employment, the consequences of poverty were invariably worse for women in all conflict affected countries. Number five, the economic conditions of reuniting women refugees, members of women headed households and women receiving food subsidies generally worsened during the post-conflict situations. Now we will discuss about feminization of agriculture. Women's role in agriculture increased during conflict and post-conflict periods. This is due to the absence of males, increasing poverty and demand for cheap labor. During conflict and displacement situations, men move out of agriculture and migrate to the urban areas for employment, leaving women to sustain agriculture and remain the backbone of the rural economy. This process is called the feminization of agriculture. Feminization refers to a rise in female labor force participation and fall in men's employment. While well, discussing about problems of the feminization of agriculture, in the aftermath of conflict, the mining of agricultural fields, extensive environmental damage, the destruction of farm equipment and the theft of animals contribute to the constraints faced by small-scale farmers including women. With the loss of male family members, women or girl-headed households may encounter legal and cultural barriers to retaining and cultivating their lands and obtaining farming implements or agricultural inputs. 
At times, they may be dispossessed of their lands and have to shift to casual agricultural labor, which erodes their material and social positions. Separation of families during conflict increases the vulnerability of displaced women. They have to face economic hardships or threats to their physical integrity. When assessing their basic needs of displaced persons, unaccompanied women, including elderly women and women alone with children, should be identified and registered for the purpose of following them up individually in terms of protection. Women must also be able to engage in gainful employment but are often adversely affected by the scarcity of employment opportunities and discriminatory practices. One particular significant example is discrimination against women with respect to land tenure. Another manifestation of this problem is when land is redistributed by traditional authorities after an armed conflict solely to male-headed households, leaving war widows or women whose husbands are missing in relation to armed conflict without access to land. Certain humanitarian organizations have engaged in advocacy to improve this situation. While discussing about migratory lifestyle and the impacts on livelihood strategies, it is found that in a conflict situation, women have to move from one place to another to avoid violence. Further restrictions are also imposed on these displaced women's freedom of movement either in or out of the area or into neighboring forests for fuel and resource gathering. It is important to note that a large portion of women living in war-torn or temporary housing have to manage life after being resettled without proper shelter. One of the main consequences of conflict is its impact on the local economy, particularly on the ability of families to earn an income. Recurrent forced movement prevents small business from operating, losing income for many families who were just making ends meet before the conflict. Conflicts have a devastating impact on the ability of families to support themselves without external assistance. Women were often forced to assume the double burden of being both the sole breadwinner and caregiver. These roles were made even more difficult by forced displacement. In a displaced situation, women from rural areas are often forced to move to urban areas to seek work to survive or to avoid sexual advances from the military. Women in these situations find sustenance for themselves or their families difficult and find it challenging to manage decent work quote unquote, and are often economically and sexually exploited in their workplace. When women are forced to flee their homes, they carry nothing except the clothes they are wearing. They are usually the ones to care about the security of their families. They barely have necessities such as food, water, shelter or items like blankets and pots. They cannot access healthcare and sanitation facilities. Opportunities for generating income or accessing education become shuttered. The traumatic experience of women who have lost members of their families, homes and jobs and found their lives ruined in a matter of days make it extremely difficult for them to cope and settle down in the new circumstances. For them, finding or creating alternative livelihood strategies is practically impossible.
Traditionally, skill training and income generating programs have confined women to activities such as sewing and embroidery which generate little income. However, displaced women have proved to be skilled at working in non-traditional, more meaningful income generating activities including those such as reforestation and reconstruction associated with large scale development projects. Checks. Similarly, displaced women often have proven to have extraordinary entrepreneurial skills. While concluding, we have come to know that numerous studies have shown the significant negative impact of conflict on displaced and refugee populations and their ability to survive. Women are generally more affected than men. The economic impact of conflict or displaced women has both positive and negative sides. The breakdown of traditional gender roles with increased participation of women in the labor force in a post-conflict situation in a way has a positive effect on women. They enter public spaces that they did not enter earlier and coping with new challenges creates a sense of confidence in them. On the other hand, the labor force participation of women in the post-conflict period also is a double burden. They have to shoulder the responsibility of both home and the workplace. Women also find it difficult to cope with their new role in the society since they are not trained or equipped to handle them. Various inconveniences which they have to face in leading their new role adversely affect their performance. Thus, economic effect of conflict can be both positive and negative for women. Proper gender sensitive efforts by international and national organizations can pave the way to empower women to enjoy their rights and freedom. As we are discussing about uh, the economic effects of displacement, we have used three important components in the lecture. First is feminization of poverty, second is feminization of agriculture and the third is feminization of labor. Let us discuss in detail about these three components. First, the feminization of poverty. The feminization of poverty is the phenomena that women is represented disproportionately. UNIFEM describes it as, I quote, the burden of poverty borne by women, especially in developing countries. This phenomena is not only a consequence of lack of income, but is also the result of the deprivation of capabilities and gender biases present in both societies and governments. This includes the poverty of choices and opportunities, such as the ability to lead a long, healthy and creative life and enjoy basic rights like freedom, respect and dignity. Secondly, the feminization of agriculture. The feminization of agriculture in feminist economics, the feminization of agriculture, it refers to the measurable increase of women's participation in the agricultural sector, particularly in the developing world. The phenomena started during 1960s with increasing shares over times. In 1990s, during liberalization, the phenomena became more pronounced and negative effects appeared in the rural female population. Afterwards, agricultural markets became more gendered institutions affecting men and women differently. At present, at least 80% of rural smallholder farmers worldwide are women as greater number of men are migrating and searching for off-farm jobs. 
finally, we will discuss the term of feminization of labor. Feminization of labor is a term that describes emerging gendered labor relations born out of the rise of global capitalism. It is feminization of the workplace which is a trend towards greater employment of women and of men willing and able to operate with this with more feminized workplace. Thank you.